Welcome to The Policy Shop, weekly conversations with public policy experts where we'll dive into the most important issues affecting all of us here in Illinois. I'm Hillary Gowans. Let's get started. Three years ago, the Chicago Teachers Union went on strike, locking kids out of class for 11 days. It was their fifth strike and work stoppage since the radical wing of the union called CORE took over CTU. Here to talk about the 2019 strike and why it matters today is Miley Smith, staff attorney and director of labor policy. Miley, welcome. Thanks for having me again. Happy anniversary. Happy three-year CTU strike anniversary. Before we get going, can you just sort of set the stage for us? What happened during the 2019 strike in Chicago and what was it all about? The 2019 strike was about a lot more than teachers' pay and benefits. It was an example of a teachers' union or government union really expanding their demands. In fact, at the time, experts acknowledged that the demands that CTU was making of the district were outside the normal scope of bargaining. And it was an example of how unions are expanding the scope of bargaining to include new things like housing and social justice issues. And one of the many things that Chicago Teachers Union was demanding during these very contentious negotiations was affordable housing. And they had a document that they listed what they meant by that. Um, They wanted the district to advocate for a city housing policy that creates affordable housing. They wanted the city to take a legislative position um, that they wanted on rent control. They wanted to institute a program to help new teachers buy homes. It was things that were not, like I said, a typical part of bargaining. And they went on strike, They, uh, which is a, a very common thing anymore, unfortunately, for Chicago Teachers Union to do. So the city had gone back and forth on them with many things. And in the end, the teachers union went on strike for housing affordability they had still had on the table. So these subjects that are not normally negotiated were on the table and they went on strike. And like you said, they kept kids out of class for 11 days. Um, It's something that has created instability for kids many times within Chicago public schools, the way that the union will just walk out on them and families sometimes giving them only hours um, to know that school's not in session the next day. And it really did set the stage for what we're seeing now um, with not just CTU, but other government unions pushing for the ability to demand things that are beyond wages and compensation, the things we typically think of with negotiations um, to include other things outside the scope that really are more pet projects of the unions that are political agendas that the unions wanna see passed. And they're doing that through the guise of collective bargaining. Yeah, a lot has obviously changed since 2019. You know, we've gone through COVID, we've gone through economic ups and downs, and a lot of uncertainty exists for a lot of people in terms of, am I going to have this, my job for, for, for long enough? Am I going to be able to make ends meet at home? So I think there's a lot of uncertainty for people. And so in an environment like that, I think we've talked about this. It's really understandable that people feel more warmly toward the idea of, unions, because it's really comforting to imagine that there's this entity, this group that exists out there to protect you and to be your voice and to stand up for you to make sure that things are fair. Um, That said, that's really not what this union is all about. Um, I think it's really interesting to pick at that uh, housing demand in the 2019 contract fight. Um, because really when you think about it that way, yeah, this is outside the scope of, am I getting paid fairly? Do I have the right benefits? Um, are my work conditions suitable? 
Uh, mm -hmm. That's not the same thing. It's a political demand. And so when you look at it that way, this is political lobbying on steroids. Can you talk about how the unions are able to wield political power? And, and by that, I, of course, mean money, right? Exactly. You know, the unions have to publish data with the Department of Labor every year. Um, if not all of them do, but some of them do, CTU does. And it's very telling. Um, only 19% of CTU spending it, on its last report was actually on behalf of its members representing them in negotiations or contract administration. Only 19%. The rest of it, about over 20, over $20 million, was on politics, union overhead, administration, their salaries, things that were union leadership agenda items. Um, that's not for the benefit of teachers. And I think we see teachers and other government union workers reacting to that in the vast number of empl government employees that are leaving their unions. Um, you know, there have been, there's been polling lately that shows like this general approval of unions in the United States. But when you actually look at what's happening within government unions, you're seeing the workers themselves leaving the unions because they're not happy. Um, we think that, you know, it, there could be some stability provided in, you know, having, oh, I have a union, I have this union to fight for me, but that's not what unions do, government unions in particular, it's, and it's certainly not what CTU does. Um, the Illinois Federation of Teachers, which is the parent of CTU, has seen nearly 18% of its membership leave since 2017. That's very telling. That is very revealing that CTU, its members and IFT's members don't really see the union as supporting them and they're leaving the union. Yeah, someone tweeted at us recently uh, he said something not very nice. I won't repeat here, but he said to us, unions aren't supposed to serve children. They protect the adults serving your children. We can talk about the, the child educate the education side of that in a minute. This line, they protect the adults serving your children. I think that's a really interesting perspective because I think that is the generous view of what CTU is supposed to do. They are supposed to represent their membership's interest. But to your point, if 18% of IFT's membership is leaving and uh, people are essentially saying, I don't, I don't think you're going to do right by me. That's not necessarily serving the adults educating our kids. And it's the only 19% that they're actually spending on that. Right. You know? and, <laughs> and that's the union's own reporting. That's why I love using that because I didn't make that up. We didn't just like look at that is straight from their federal report. Here's what they spent on representing teachers, here's their total, it's only 19%. Um, so that's not what the union is doing. They're not representing the adults who take care of the children and teach the children. They're doing their own thing and it's largely political. Yeah, and I, I think too, you can tell a lot about a person's character based on how they treat people they disagree with. And we've been fortunate to meet some really brave people who have shared their experience with CTU. So Ifoma and Kemde and Joel Kuhl are two Chicago public school teachers who have talked with us about how awful it was for them when faced with the idea, or faced with the choice of going against the union or walking out on their students who depend on them, they chose the kids. And they talk about how brutal union members were to them, people that they worked with, people they respected. And it goes without saying that no, in a, co a collective group as big as CPS, there are great teachers. There are good teachers, good people. This isn't a commentary on Chicago teachers as a whole, but I think the commentary is on this mentality that CTU and its radical wing has instilled in people that if you're not with us, you're against us and we will terrify you. And, and it's a commentary definitely on the leadership and what they view their purpose being. They don't 
they may say their purpose is representing teachers, but their actions don't reflect that. I know after the 2019 strike, um, there was an interview with Lori Lightfoot, and she talked about how this isn't, the leadership wasn't there, union leadership wasn't there, you know, negotiating things on behalf of teachers. It was more like they're trying to take over the city and take over City Hall. Um, that's my paraphrase. But, you know, the idea is that this isn't a union that is just there trying their hardest for the teachers. And their federal reports show that. This is a union that is overtly political, that is doing everything they can to take over and dictate, like their demands showed, dictate what the city does on a, a broad scope of things. Um, that's not what unions were intended to do. The unions were intended to protect their members, to advocate for their members, and see to you as an example of how that's not happening. Right, and I think the problem with all of this too is that it distracts us from the purpose of our public schools, which is to make sure kids have a good education. Right. The yeah. teachers have their advocates and these kids are just sort of at the whim of whatever the politicians and whatever the union leaders want. And in Chicago, that's led to devastating educational outcomes, right? I mean, what are the most recent numbers show is happening with kids in schools in Chicago? Their, their reading and math scores have been tanking, even though in the last 10 years, the district has spent more on kids we are seeing the inverse happening with their test scores. They are dropping. Um, a third of the schools are not even half full. So we are seeing an educational environment that is not benefiting the children. And you know, to get back to what that gentleman had said before about the union isn't there for the students, that's exactly right. And I think that gets to the core of the problem here. The students and the parents don't have an advocate at the table when this bargaining is going on or when decisions are being made. You know, their advocate is supposedly the government officials, but those government officials have a whole lot of other stuff going on and the political wrangling is going on. So when there are two parties at the table, it's the union and the city officials who are political leaders themselves, there's no one there just as a source to stand up for the kids and the parents. And that is a system that we are seeing in Chicago and in other places throughout the state or even in the country that has been detrimental to students and, and their grades or their, their test scores and, and how well they are, are doing, not just you know in school, but their proficiency levels. I wanna close with a quote from Howard Fuller He's a civil rights leader and a longtime education reformer. And uh, he said something that I think really encompasses all that this conversation is about. He said, we've allowed a structure to exist that doesn't serve children. Exactly and right. I think that is why we care so much about this. This is a problem that has been inflicted upon our kids and it's getting in the way of them having a healthy, happy childhood and a strong education. And um, I think Howard Fuller is exactly right. So Miley, let's wrap on that. Um, thank you so much for everything you do and for sharing your perspective on this. Happy third strike anniversary. <laughs> yes, hopefully we don't have another one soon. <laughs> All right, bye. Listen and subscribe to The Policy Shop wherever you get your podcasts.